Today we're digging into Jet Engine with this foundational video that will show you the basics of getting started. So if you've ever wanted to take your WordPress websites and make them just a little bit more unique, then tools like Jet Engine are a great way of doing just that. Now, first of all, let me just quickly say this is a foundational video. It's not going to cover every single aspect of Jet Engine. That would take hours and hours and hours. This is for anybody that's new to working with this tool and wants to see how it works and just to get the foundations in place. Now, I will be covering more complex and comprehensive features and functions of Jet Engine in future videos. But for now, this is the foundational video to get you started. So what we're going to do is we're going to break this down into the various different component pieces so you get an understanding of what things like meta fields and post types and things like that actually are. So let me just break down what they are to start off with and then we'll take a look at using each one of these as we go through the video. First, we'll look at custom post types. They allow for the creation and management of unique content types on a WordPress site beyond the default post and pages that we're used to, enabling a more structured and diverse content organization on your website. Then we'll look at meta fields in Jet Engine. These are custom fields that attach additional information to posts, pages, or custom post types, enriching that content with extra details like text, dates, images, and more. Then we'll look at taxonomies. These are used for custom categorization and help group and classify your content. Similar to categories and tags that we're used to, they are customizable to fit a website's specific organizational needs. Then we're going to look at glossaries in Jet Engine. They define predefined sets of options for custom fields, ensuring consistent data input, and then facilitating better content management and user experience through standardized selection lists. Now that sounds really quite complicated, but just think of it as a simple list that's already predefined that you don't have to worry about. Then finally, we're going to take a look at how we can output all of this new data inside our WordPress website. Now, once you've installed Jet Engine on your website, you're going to have a new entry inside the dashboard called Jet Engine. Inside there, we've got different options available. And sometimes you'll see more or less options inside this sublist as you enable and disable functions. I'm not going to cover any of those additional functions except for one in this video today. But just know that this list may change depending upon what you have enabled. But we're going to concentrate on post types. We're going to concentrate on taxonomies, and we're also going to take a look at those glossaries and how we can use those as part of our overall setup. Now, for our example today, we're going to keep this really simple, but it's going to introduce you to some of the core things that you need to know about. We're going to use a typical team section on a website that will put information to do with team members. So we want things like their name, their bio, their photograph, and additional information, maybe their job roles and so on. So this is a good use case for using things like custom post types for the team members, but also then using custom meta fields for additional information and glossaries to be able to combine that information with groupings that will make sure that we don't end up with spelling mistakes and issues and things like that. So let's take a look, first of all, at how we create our post type for our team members. So from Jet Engine, we're going to come into the options for post types. And this allows us now to create our first post type. We'll click on Add New. And then this section is broken down into various different pieces. We're going to go through these. I'm not going to cover every single option inside here because it will just be information overkill. We're going to keep it simple and stripped back for the key things that you need to know about to get you up and running. So first of all, the post type name. So we're going to pop in team members. We click underneath. You can see this automatically fills out the post type slug. If you want to change that, you can do. Just make sure you put underscores or dashes in between any of the words that you use. You can see it's automatically filled it out between team and members for us. We'll leave the next two options disabled. Let's open up the labels section. Now inside here, you see everything is basically empty. And you may be thinking, I've got to go through all of these options and fill all of these in. You don't. Simply leave them as they are unless you specifically want to change them to something different to the default values. And what this will do is WordPress and Jet Engine will just basically fill this out with the default things you're used to seeing, like add new something, team member, for example, edit team members. You get the idea. So we don't need to fill out the label section. But if you want to change anything, you can do it. And you can come in at any point afterwards and edit anything inside you pretty much. So we'll drop that down and close it. Open up the advanced settings. And again, inside here, we can pretty much leave most of the settings here at their default values. And you'll see everything has got information underneath about what it does. But you can see we may want to exclude our team members from the search function. 
Let's say we're only creating a listing. We don't want to have details pages about them. Well, it makes no sense to have a search result. So in this example, we'll do just that. We'll disable and exclude this from searches. So none of our team members will show up. We want to do things like showing the admin UI and showing the admin menu and so on. It's just a nicer user experience. Scrolling on down, we're going to set this to be hierarchical. Now, we don't have to set this. It just means that everything's just a little bit easier to organize the content as we're working with it. So again, a purely optional option, as it were. We we'll leave all the rest of the options inside here. Things like the capability type, for example, this is basically saying that the functions we see inside a typical WordPress post, title, description, those kinds of things, are available to this custom post type. By default, that is enabled and you don't need to change it. I just want to make you aware because it's kind of useful. You may want to send this to actually operate like a page instead of a post, so we don't have things like featured images and so on. Well, you could do that if you wanted to. Then we can choose where we want this to actually be displayed. So if we take a look at our left-hand navigation, we can choose where inside there this is going to show up. So let's open this up and say we want this to be after our posts. So we'll choose that option, and now that says that will be appearing underneath our post section inside the left-hand navigation. You'll see that when we create things. Let's change the icon to something that's a bit more appropriate. We'll choose this person icon. And then we've got the supports option. And this is where we can choose what default WordPress functions or options we choose to include. By default, you can see it's the title and the editor. When you create a normal post, you've got a title, you've got the editor where you put your content, and there's additional fields like featured image, tags, categories, and so on, where you can enable or disable them from this location. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose the select option, and you see everything we have available is included inside you. We're going to choose the option for thumbnail because we're going to use that for the profile picture for our team member. And we'll leave the title and the editor set up inside you. That's perfectly fine for this example. So now we've got the basics in place. The next thing we can do is add in our own custom meta fields. So let's add a new meta field in. Let's scroll up and you can see this is where we can choose what kind of field it is, give it a name, set any parameters we need for it. Now, if you're not sure what a meta field is, again, if we go back to what we've just seen, where we've got the supports, the title, the editor, the thumbnail, each one of these is a meta field. It contains information in a particular format that can be added to this specific post type. That's all this is. So what we're going to do is we're going to come down and add a couple of new fields in. Again, we're going to keep this really, really simple. So we're going to just say job title. Again, you see when we click underneath, this will pre-fill out the name dash ID. Again, if you want to change that, you can do. The field type, you can see this is set as a field, but we can choose from things like tabs, accordions, and so on. Again, I'm not going to cover this in this video. This is basically saying a field is a standard meta field. A tab, as you would expect, it sets up a tab to contain additional meta fields. So itself isn't a meta field, if that makes any sense. So these are kind of from an organizational point of view. The same thing goes for an accordion that allows you to group your content together. So if you've got really, really big custom post types with lots and lots of meta fields, it probably makes sense to organize them either using tabs or accordions. And this allows you to do just that. OK, so next up, we've got the field type. So you can see we can pick from a range of different field types, things like text, dates, time, selects, and so on. So you can choose what makes sense here. We're going to set this to be text for this example. That's perfectly fine. If you want to drop a description in, you can do. So again, if you've got fields that maybe they may not make total sense to someone, drop a description in there and explain what that field is actually about. Great if you've got things like acronyms or shortened words and things like that that just need a little bit of explanation. You can then set up things like field width. So if you've got lots of very small fields, it makes sense to reduce these to a smaller value. So this kind of stack side by side, and it just makes everything inside the dashboard look a little neater. We'll leave this to 100, though, for this example. It's not really too much of a problem. And if you want to do things like limit characters, set default values, and so on, you can do. We're going to set this to be required because we want to make sure they add it. Quick edit support is nice if you've got smaller fields, things like we've got here. This allows it to be editable inside the normal listing. You can just quick edit, and you don't have to go into the actual editing of that post proper. Nice and simple to use. Do you want to support revisions? You can do that. I would recommend probably disabling that or leaving it disabled for things like this because there shouldn't really be any need. There's not a lot of information, and it makes it quick and easy to be able to go and change things, but more complex. Uh, sort of post types with lots of meta fields and information, you may want to enable revision support so people can jump back. We'll leave the show and rest API and we'll leave the conditional logic as it is. We don't need to show or hide this field under any kind of parameters. So we'll just minimize this. 
and we'll add another field in. This time we're going to give this, we're going to call this a GDC number. Again, you can see that'll pre-fill out underneath. Field is perfectly fine. We're going to change this from text though. We're going to set this to be a number. We don't want to worry about minimum and maximum values, but what this demonstrates is when you change the field type to other field types, different options will open up for you. So there's context-based options underneath this once you choose your field type. It's worth bearing in mind that these are changing depending upon what you want to do. Again, you can add a description in, set a field width, set a default value, set it to be required, and so on. So we're going to say we want to set this to be required, and we want to set this to have quick edit support. And there's our two custom meta fields set up. So we could, if we wanted to, leave it as it is right now. We've basically set up the main things that we need for our custom post type. However, we're going to go and add a couple of little nice to haves. You can see we've got this admin columns section underneath. Well, this is where we can go and set up additional fields that we're creating inside our meta fields, for example, or standard WordPress fields, and display those in the admin columns section for our custom post type. It just makes things a little easier to see what's going on. So let's do that. Let's add a new column in. Going to give this a title. We're going to say featured image, or we'll call this biopic. So under the type section, we've got four different options we can pick from. Your meta value is going to come from one of our custom meta fields above. Post terms, post ID, we're going to leave those for now. We're going to jump into the custom callback. When we do that, you can see we can choose the callback, and we can just select from existing ones. And from there, we're going to grab this one, which says jet engine custom CB render image. Whoa, sounds complicated. It just pulls up the featured image. That's basically all it's going to do. Set the size if you want to, 100 is perfectly fine, and click Apply. We're going to set our column order. We're going to set this to be the first column because it makes more sense. Prefixes and suffixes, we don't need them, and it makes no sense to make these sortable because they are effectively just a picture. Okay, so everything is now in place. All we're going to do is click Add Post Type, and now if we take a look at the left-hand side, we've got our team members, which is our new custom post type. If we open this up, this is our listing. You can see there's our biopic. There's our title, there's our date. So we've got most of the information inside here, but I want to show you now how easy it is to go back and edit things. So let's say we want to put in the job role, things like that, additional information. Let's go and do it. Let's come back into Jet Engine, come back into our post type. There's our team members. Let's edit this. Let's scroll down until we get the admin columns and open this up. Add a new column in, and this time we're going to set this to be the job title. So again, like we've done before, we put the name in, job title. This time we're going to choose meta value. So what we're going to do is there's our job title. Let's expand this out, and there's our name dash ID. This is the unique identifier for this specific meta field. So what we're going to do is we're going to select it. We're going to copy it. I'm going to come down underneath, and inside our admin columns, we're going to put the field name in there. So we're going to paste that in. There's our job title. We'll set this to be three and again we don't need suffixes or prefixes we'll say let's make it sortable and you can see is it a numeric field in this example it's not it's text but if you were working with numeric fields you can set it inside there to tell it that it's a numeric field let's just leave that as it is and say we're happy now we've updated this let's go back to our team members and now you can see there's our biopic, our title, our new job title, and the date that this was added. So you can carry on repeating the same process and adding additional fields to make your dashboard a lot more usable and easier to understand. Now, if we take a look at the left-hand side, you can see we've got team members, we've got add new page. Doesn't make a lot of sense. It's not a page we're adding in. So let me show you now. If we go back again into Jet Engine and back into our post type, let's open up our team members and edit this. Now let's come into our labels. And under our labels for add new, we're simply going to change this to add new member, update our post type, and refresh. And now you'll see it says add new member. Makes a lot more sense. So you can see everything is editable. It's very easy to change things. If you find it's not exactly the way that you want, you can come back in and make changes as you need to, if you need to. So now inside the add new member, you can see you've got the title. We've got the content, the actual content itself. If we look on the right-hand side, you can see we've got featured image, so we've set that up. So those are the three default standard post fields. But underneath then, you can see we've got job title and we've got GDC number. So everything is set up inside you, ready for us to start adding content in. So let's just add a new member in. Okay, so adding the content in is exactly the same as any other post type. With the additional fields, they just need to be filled out like we've seen before. Let's publish this. Now let's go back to our list, and you can see there's our new user with his biopic, his name, 
is job, position, job title, and the date it was published. So all the basics are now in place. Now we're working with team members and we've got multiple different offices for this particular business. So a good way of doing this is to make sure we've got things organized by the different locations or different offices. So we're gonna create a custom taxonomy just to do that. So we're gonna come over to Jet Engine again. This time we're gonna choose taxonomies. We're gonna click add new. And we're going to go through and fill out the relevant information. Now you're going to see there's several things inside here that look exactly the same as we saw when we were creating our custom post type. Things like our labels, advanced settings, meta fields, and so on. They work in fundamentally the same way, but there are some differences inside here. So first of all, let's put our taxonomy name in. We'll set that to office location. Click outside into the taxonomy slug, and again, it pre-fills it out for us. What post type do you want to associate this with? So this is where we're gonna connect this custom taxonomy with our new custom post type. But you can set this up to work with multiple post types. So you can create taxonomies that are associated with a range of different post types should you need to. For this example though, we just want to link this up to the team members. You can see if we wanted to add more, we can simply come in and add or delete as we need to. Again, we're going to leave the edit taxonomy meta box links and so on as they were. Labels, again, you can see inside there, we can set things up if we want to and make changes should we need to, either now or to later date. We'll close that down for now. Advanced settings, again, you can see we've got options inside here for how we want this to be set up. Like I said, public, can people on the front end see it and so on? Do you want to show it in the admin menu? You kind of get the idea. The only thing we're going to do on here is set this to be hierarchical. And then we're basically going to leave it as is. We're not going to create any custom meta fields. You could do if you wanted to. We don't need them. We're simply going to use this purely for organizing our team members. So all we're going to do is click Add Taxonomy. Now if we come over to our team member section, you can see we've got a new section inside here called Office Location. Click, and there's the option, like we've seen with standard tags and standard taxonomies, categories, and things like that in WordPress. So let's add a couple of offices in. So there's our three offices for our fictitious business. We've added them in, and now we can associate those with our members. So let's come back into our team members. We'll edit Dave, and you can see now office location is available on the right-hand side. So expand that, and now we're going to add in where he's working, which is Cardiff, and we'll click on Update. So now if we go back, we've now set everything up inside here. Now if we want to, let's open up the quick edit and see what's available in there. So you can see we can change the job title, we can change the GDC number, we can even change the office locations. So let's say that Dave's now moved, he's working in London, all we need to do is change it there, click update, job done. But we can use this to globally change things by editing multiple different team members at the same time. So it's really nice to have these in the quick edit section where it makes sense. Okay, so now we've set that up, let's go and move on to the next thing I want to cover. So let's say we've got some repetitive information. We want to use this and we don't want people to have accidental spelling mistakes or they're gonna manually put it in. We wanna have everything organized and set up predefined for us. And if anybody needs to add additional information in, they can do it in one simple location. For that, we're gonna use glossaries. Now to access these, all we need to do is go into Jet Engine, choose Jet Engine from the top of the list, and inside there you can see we've got glossaries. Now, all of these things on the default modules on the right-hand side, we'll cover many of these in future videos. These are additional functions you can enable inside Jet Engine. For now, we're going to leave those as they are with the default values. So let's come back into glossaries, and this allows you to create a glossary. So at first glance, you may be thinking, this doesn't tell me anything. It's very, very simple. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add a new glossary, and we're gonna give this a name. We're gonna call this Team Department. The data source, we can choose between setting this manually, or if we wanted to, we could actually upload a file that's been prepared earlier. For this, we're gonna set it manually. And then all we need to do is add some new fields in. So we'll add a new field, give it a name, and give it a field label. You can see there's our marketing department. We'll have the option if you wanted to make this the default or selected value. We'll choose to add a new field in. And we'll keep on doing this until we've got all the departments. Okay, so all our departments are in place. We'll click on save. And we've now set up our first glossary. So you may be thinking, how do I actually use this? Let's go take a look. It's very easy and it's a real time saver. So we're gonna go back into our post type and we're gonna add a new field inside here that's gonna connect up to our glossaries that allows them to be able to pick what department they actually work in. So let's edit. Once we're gonna open this up and we're gonna come down to the option for meta fields and we're gonna add a new meta field in. So choose meta field. We're gonna put this and we're gonna call this team department. 
Again, it'll fill out the name ID. Field is perfectly fine. The field type, we're going to set this to be a field type that can use a glossary. So things like the select, the sort of checkboxes and so on, these can all use the glossary function. So for this example, we're going to keep it really simple and say we want to use the select option. And you can see now this says, what's the source? We've got manual input, or we can choose bulk manual input, query builder, but what we want is glossary. We'll choose that from the list. We'll click on new field option, and you can see that now opens up the select glossary option. So all we need to do is open that up and choose the team department, which is the name of the glossary we just created. Select that, and we put a placeholder in there, and we'll say, do you want to allow multiple values to be selected? It makes no sense in this example, but if you need to, you can have this so people can select multiple different options from your glossary list. Again, we've got things like description, whether it's required and so on. So we can say, yes, it's required. Yes, we want quick edit support. And we're going to just click update post type. We're going to come back into our team members. Let's go and add a new member in. And you see now we have our new field, which is our team department. We can select and we can choose from our list there exactly what we want. So let's go and add a new member in. Like before, we'll choose the office location. We'll say that she's working in Edinburgh. We'll choose the featured image. And we'll select that from the list. And now we're going to put a job title, put the GDC number in, and then select the department that they're actually in. Click Publish. And we now have a new team member using all the functions we've just built out. So now if we go back, you can see there's Jane Doe. Now Dave Davis obviously doesn't have the department set up correctly. So we need to go back in and we'll edit this, but we'll choose the quick edit. And you can see there's our team department. We can choose the option and we'll say he's in management, for example, and we'll click update. So you can see how easy it is to be able to put this content together to create these custom post types to speed up our workflow using Jet Engine. So now we've got the basics in place. The next thing we need to do is take a look at how we're going to output this information onto our actual website itself. So for this portion of the video where we take a look at how we output the information we've just created in Jet Engine, we're going to be using Bricks Builder. But you don't need to. You could easily do this with anything like Elemental, anything that allows you to output that dynamic data from Jet Engine, even just using the standard built-in listing option inside Jet Engine itself and pairing that with Gutenberg. It all works in fundamentally the same way. So this is what we're going to be taking a look at creating. You can see we've got a page that's all about our team members. And if we scroll down, there's our team members. We've got their profile picture. We've got their name. We've got their role. We've got the GDC number, the department they're in, their bio, and also which office they're actually located in. So for speed, I've already created the page to take our team member information. There's our hero section at the top. And then I've inserted a section and a container ready for our custom meta information. So let's start building this out. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to select our container and we're going to create the template that's going to hold the kind of placeholder information for all of our team members. To do that, all we're going to do is we're going to come over, add our elements in. We're going to add a block in. This will put the block that's going to be the container for each individual item. So inside there, we want to add a couple of different elements. So first of all, we're going to come back and choose the elements. We'll insert an image. We'll insert a heading. We'll insert some rich text. And we'll come back and see what else we need to add in a moment or two. We've got some extra things to add in, but I'll show you how you can do that. OK, so first thing you want to do is make sure that we've got this set up correctly to be able to display all the people inside our team member section. For that, we're going to create a custom loop. So first things first, we're going to select our block, which is going to be the container, like I say, for each of our individual team members. We're going to come over and set this to be a query loop. We'll open up the query options. We'll set the type to be posts. The post type is going to be our custom post type, which is team members. You can set whatever order you want. I'm going to go for something simple like the title, which is their name. And we're going to say we'll have this in ascending order. If you want to, you can do things like the number of posts per page and so on. So if you have a large team section, you're probably going to want to break this down to pages and add pagination and so on. But let's keep this simple. OK, so now we've set this to be a loop. You'll see nothing is really happening just yet. So let's start fleshing this out with some content. Let's select our image first of all. We'll come over to the left-hand side, and where we've got this select dynamic data, we're going to click on the little dynamic data icon, the little lightning bolt. And from there, we're going to scroll through until we get to featured image. Give it a second or so, and you'll see that loads in the first person. And if we scroll down, you can see that now also is loaded in the second person as well. So there's our basic information for the featured image. We'll come back and customize these in a moment. 
the heading, we want their name. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the heading element. We'll remove the filler text on the left-hand side, and we'll choose the lightning bolt icon one more time. We'll choose post title, which is where we've got their name set up. As you can see, or you may not, we've got Dave Davis and we have Jane Doe. So we're going to do the same thing now for the rich text, but this is going to work slightly differently. Let's get rid of all of this completely. We can click on our lightning bolt, and the first thing we're going to do is choose post, and from there we're going to choose the option for post content. And that's going to basically load in their bio. So we've got the first couple of pieces of information in. Now let's make our life a little easier by seeing this information a little bit clearer before we start adding any more in. So the first thing we want to do is obviously get these to be positioned side by side. So we're going to select our container that holds our block element. We're going to come over into the display section under content. We're going to set this to be grid. And then we're going to choose our grid template columns. We're going to do 1FR space 1FR to put it into two columns. And we're going to set a row gap and a column gap. So we're going to just choose a simple gap inside there. We'll choose something like, let's go for large. There we go. So you've now got a nice gap in between. The next thing we want to do is make sure that we've got this set up semantically correct. To do that, we're going to make sure we've got our container still selected. We're going to come over to the HTML tags on the left-hand side, and we're going to set this to be a UL, or an ordered list. Then we're going to choose our block, which is going to hold each one of our individual team members and all their relevant information. And we're going to select that, and we're going to come over, and we're going to set this to be a HTML tag, and we're going to say LI for list item. So that's going to set these up to be lists, basically. Much better for semantics. Okay, so now we've got those things in place. Let's just quickly make our text a little bit more readable, making sure the block is selected, come over to our styles. We're going to come over into our typography settings, change our colors to be our white or whatever you want. There's our body text. We'll change our heading in a moment. Now, obviously, you can set this up in whatever way you want. You can set this up with global classes and so on, which I would recommend. But we're keeping this simple for this example. Let's choose our heading. Let's set our font size using our fluid typography scale. Let's set this to be something like extra large. We'll set our color again to be white inside here. And we're going to come down and we're going to set this to be 400. If you're wondering, I'm using Core Framework for this example. It just speeds up the design process immeasurably. Okay, with that in place, let's select our image and give ourselves a bit of space underneath. So we'll come to our layout, come to our margins. Right click, and we're going to add some spacing inside here. So let's just do something not too massive, maybe small, just gives us a bit of separation. There we go. That looks pretty good. Okay, so now we've got the basics set up. Let's go and take a look at how we add in more information. So we're going to click underneath where our rich text is, come back over and add in a new element. Again, we're going to use rich text inside here. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the rich text element in this example just to simply hold dynamic data. So let's come to our content. Let's remove what's already in here. And now we're going to click on the little lightning bolt. We're going to come down this time to Jet Engine because we want us tar targeting those custom meta fields we created as part of our custom post type. So we're going to start off with our job title. We're going to put some separators in. We're going to come back to our little lightning bolt, which for some reason always seems to drop down underneath. Then we're going to come in and we're going to choose our GDC number. And we'll do the same again, a space and a couple of slashes, and choose our little lightning bolt. Finally, we're going to grab our department. Now, at the moment, these mean nothing to nobody. So what we can do is, and this is why the rich text is so useful, we can mix and match dynamic data in line with actual simple, straightforward content. So we can say job title. If we want to, we can even select that, make it bold. The same thing again. So do GDC, select it, make it bold. And finally, we're going to set the department and make that bold. So you can see we've got all the information displayed inside our layout, and now we can come into our style if we want to, and we can adjust the styling on this. So let's make this a little smaller. So we'll right click and choose small for our text. We'll come into our layout and we'll add a little bit of space above. So we'll just choose to have something like that inside there. So you can see how things are coming along. We've started to create this dynamic content and pull it all in. So the final thing we need to do now is add in the taxonomy that we set up to create and link everything together. So this is done very easily. So what we're going to do is we're going to this time choose a heading element. But again, you can choose anything you want. I just think the heading makes a little bit more sense here. So we'll select that. We'll just quickly style it and make it a little bit more in lines. So we'll set this to be a H4 in this example because we've got a H3 for the actual name of the person. So we're just keeping that hierarchy going down. 
And what we're going to do now is we're going to change this from I am a heading. We're going to click the little lightning bolt. And we're going to scroll through until we get the option for our terms. And if we scroll to the bottom, you see we've got our office location, which is our custom term or custom taxonomy that we set up inside Jet Engine. We'll select it. That will give a second or two, and then you'll see we've got the office that they work in. So now all we need to do is quickly style that. So in Thai typography, we'll choose this bright yellow color so we can easily see it. We'll set our type size. We'll set this to be something like medium. Change this a little bit, and we'll add a little bit of space above that. Now you'll notice that this just says the word Cardiff or Edinburgh, which doesn't really mean anything to anybody. So what we can do is come back to our content. And this is one of the things that's really nice about working with bricks. We can add anything before, after. We don't have any limitation on what we can put inside you. We can even add custom classes, spans, and all those kinds of things directly inside these boxes. So flexible. So we're going to say at the end of it, we're just going to put in the word office. And there you go, there's our dynamic data all in place. So now if we want to, we can add a little bit of custom style into this to make it all look just a little bit nicer, a little bit better. I'll quickly do that behind the scenes so you don't have to wait around. And there you go, with a little bit of simple styling, things are now looking a lot nicer. Let's click Save and take a preview of this. So there we go, on the front end, there's our hero section. If we scroll down, there's our team members with their pictures, everything styled up. We can see their name, their bio, the job title, and so on, the office in which they work in, and so much more. And as we add new members of staff to the team, this will automatically expand and grow, taking on all the styling and the information we put in using this dynamic data. This is really is a really simple example of what you can do. And the first in a series of videos where I will be covering slightly more advanced topics as we kind of move through using Jet Engine alongside other tools like Elementor, Bricks Builder, and so on. If you want to find out more, all the links are in the description down below. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. Until next time, take care.